age is relevant to Travis Hershey's social bond theory of crime in four regards. Uh, first of all, uh, age is relevant to the attachment to conventional others uh, and your commitment to your school, career, family. Those are uh, conventional others that one is involved with heavily as a child, one is committed to school, then one is committed to work. In between, there is uh, a period in terms of age in which individuals are available. Uh, the commitment that people feel to a particular track in life is very high in the school years. Uh, graduation is a project usually uh, and in fact people are committed uh, legally speaking to attend school up to a certain age after a certain point uh, most individuals tend to become committed very strongly to their career and to their family that's not so much the case in young adulthood time restrictions are related to those uh, it's very hard to knock over a 7-eleven or go on a killing spree if you have to take care of the baby uh, if you have to go ahead and get the car washed and do all these other things that one typically does if one has a career or if one is in, uh, involved with family or heavily involved in school. Hard to write that term paper and carry out uh, a bank robbery at the same time. Finally, there's a question of belief. Uh, and, and this is one that develops across the lifespan. As people get older, uh, they become more socialized into accepting conventional norms. So in youth, uh, the other uh, forms of attachment and commitment and involvement are, are uh, much more strongly related to uh, the lack of criminal activity. Uh, if people have not been fully socialized and then you let them go uh, in young adulthood, you see what happens. You give them a lot of free time. Crime will occur. And what I'm going to show you are some actual age crime curves for various offenses in the United States. I'm going to go through them quickly. You can always pause the video. And this is a, a link uh, at which you can find these age crime curves and other ones as well. Uh, it's at BJS.gov, which is short for the Bureau of Justice Statistics. Now, this is the overall... Uh, number of criminal arrests for particular age groups. Uh, and I want you to notice where the peak is, 21 through 24. Uh, and, and then it starts to slowly decline, but steadily decline uh, for years after that. Also, you'll notice there is there's a, a steep incline. Uh, these are small age increments on, on the left-hand side of your screen uh, from 10 to 12, then 13 to 14, then 15, 16, 17, and 18. You really get right up there. And then finally, when people are free from high school, a number of criminal arrests go way up. What's really striking is the hugely diminished number of criminal arrests by those under 10 years of age and over 65 years of age. Why is that so astonishing? Because there are a lot of people who are under 10 and a lot of people who are older than age 65. There are a lot of years above 65 and there's 10 whole years of people uh, less than 10. Uh, a lot of people around. This, this is actually the number of people in the United States. Uh, who are of particular ages, and yet, and I believe those were in uh, uh, thousands themselves, uh, and yet we don't see that there is a corresponding huge number of very old criminals or very young criminals. The fact that the large numbers of very young people and large numbers of very old people uh, are not getting involved is a testament to the shaping power of age. Let's look at some more particular data here. Uh, this is the number of uh, murders and non-negligent manslaughter arrests uh, in the United States. It's not for this year, obviously, because this year's not done. It's, it's a couple years old. 
but it peaks, you notice, at age 21 through 24, the classic age crime curve. Number of rape arrests, the same. Uh, the number of burglary arrests, okay? You notice there seems to be a, a low point at 19 through 20, and then uh, uh, a peak again at 21 through 24. Recognize that 21 through 24 has four years in it, 19 through 20, that category has just two years in it. So the fact that you get a double peak is really just an artifact of the fact that you have larger age categories. Why do you have larger age categories? Because um, the Bureau of Justice Statistics believes that you don't need to have a fine discernment because they know this about age and crime, that it's mostly very young people who are doing it. And once you get into the 20s, you start to fall off. The same thing happens for motor vehicle thefts. Same thing happens for arson arrests, although it's interesting that the peak is a little bit lower. The trend is the same. Once you get uh, uh, into the teens, you get high numbers and then a gradual decline through life. What about forgery and counterfeiting? Uh, well, the peak is a little bit older. It's the mid-20s, but it's still relatively young. Um, in fact, it's surprising given that this is a skill that takes some work uh, in order to, to develop, and yet young people are still the peak in terms of arrests. The same when it comes to embezzlement. Embezzlement, the most common age category is 21 through 24. And then there's a quick decline prostitution arrests. There's a, a less steep decline, but the decline still occurs. 21 through 24 is the peak. Gambling, 21 through 24 is the peak. Drug abuse arrests, 21 through 24. It's the peak. Here's the age crime curve again for driving under the influence arrests. Okay, there's a steeper curve which occurs closer to 21, the legal age for drinking, but still, um, you notice there's this effect of youth. Uh, what, who are the 21 through 24s? They are the people who have low social control, less of a system of affiliations, of obligations, of time sinks, and so they are more free to go out and commit crimes. We've talked about people who commit crimes, but uh, the flip side of the coin is victimization, who the victims are. and it's true that there's an age crime curve for victims uh, as well. Uh, why? Because of a principle called homophily. Homo meaning like you and philly meaning liking you. The homophily principle states that people form social ties disproportionately with those who are like themselves. Birds of a feather flock together is the adage you may have heard. Well, what do we also know? We know that crime occurs disproportionately between people who know each other, or at least are acquainted with each other. It's a bit of a myth that the typical crime occurs between strangers. The typical crime occurs between people who know one another, or at least know one another by face or, or by name, often who know one another quite well. Therefore, if young people are the people who are committing crimes, the people who they are victimizing will also tend to be young. This is um, some data from the National Crime Victimization Survey, which shows the homophily principle in effect. This particular um, graph regards stalking. And if you look at the horizontal axis, uh, there are uh, perceived offender ages, perceived by the victim who's reporting this to the, the uh, Bureau of Justice Statistics. So there's under 18, 18 through 20, 20 to 21, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and 50 and older. And then the victim also reports their age. Now, these lighter colors, if you look at the key over on the right, are higher percentages. And what do we see? We see that when you're talking about 
victims of stalking who are 18 to 20, where are most of the, the offenders concentrated? It's not older people. It's people who are of the same age, also 18 through 20. What about when victims are 21 through 29? Okay, it's not everybody's the same age, but most of them are also 21 through 29. Uh, 30 through 39 year olds, the, the highest uh, portion is also 30 to 39 year olds. And for 50 years or older victims, the, the peak, uh, the most common uh, age of, that's perceived for the offender is also 50 or older. That's homophily in effect. If you're old, you're more likely to be uh, offended against by someone who is in your age group. And so we see, because there are more people who are young committing crimes, in this case violent crimes, that the age of the victims of violent crimes is also young. Uh, it peaks at 20 through 34, which is a broad category in the National Crime Victimization Survey. What about robbery? We have this idea, who's the victim of a stick-up, right? Uh, we have, we certainly know that it's a, typically a young person who's engaging in that, but we, there's this image that, well, you're going to pick on the old, you're going to pick on the frail. Well, no, it turns out, actually, the victims of robbery tend to be of the same age as the most typical criminals. 20 through 34 is the peak. That's a dangerous age to be, uh, both if you're concerned about becoming a criminal and also if you're concerned about becoming a victim of crime. <laughs>